Hey everybody, uh, y'all be patient with me. This is my first cooking video. Uh, I've had numerous requests of people asking me how to uh, make my gumbo. Uh, so today I have to make a chicken and sausage gumbo. And uh, this is some of the ingredients. Uh, this is, is chicken thighs, uh, chicken breasts, and uh, we got some uh, smoked sausage, onions, bell peppers, ham, uh, flour for our roux, and all of our ingredients. Garlic, onion powder, garlic powder, pepper, salt, some Cajun seasoning, and we're going to put green bell peppers plus dehydrated red and green bell peppers, dehydrated. Uh, I'm going to get all this stuff cleaned and cut up and I'll bring, bring you back when uh, I get it all cut up. Alright, we're back. I've got everything all cut up. My sausage, my ham, uh, bell peppers, onions, and uh, I've got my chicken in my big stock pot here. I've got it on and uh, just got it boiling. <clears throat> so now we're going to take and I season this with some salt, pepper, uh, uh, little garlic powder, and now I'm going to put my chopped vegetables in with my dehydrated bell peppers too. I'm going to put that in there <clears throat> and let that simmer until uh, the chicken gets tender. When the chicken gets tender, I will take the chicken out and uh, pull off all the fat. If there's any bone left on it, any fat, gristle, or anything, I'll pull all that off and I'm going to set it to the side because the chicken will be one of the last things that goes back into the gumbo to keep it from falling apart. In the meantime, <clears throat> we've got our sausage and our ham and always put everything cooked in your gumbo, no matter what nobody tells you. The flavor is totally different when you pre-cook something. So we're going to cook our sausage. We're going to cook our sausage down and then after it is uh, cooked, we're going to uh, take it out of there, and strain it, put it in the strainer, let all the oil that we can get out of it. When that is done, uh, we're going to put our ham in, we're going to fry our ham. We're going to take it out, do the same thing, let it drain. And at that time, the chicken should be getting close. And as this drains, and we, after we take the chicken out, we're going to put our ham and all the rest of our ingredients into our soup, our uh, chicken stock, and let it boil for probably 15 to 20 good minutes before we uh, add our rest of our meats back to it. And uh, I'm going to fry all this down, and uh, we'll get back with you. All right, I just wanted to give you a quick look. This is where we're cooking our sausage down, cooking all the oil out of it and the grease and stuff, and we're gonna brown that. And we, like I said, we got our chicken stock going here, and we have our chicken, all our vegetables, and everything in here are uh, boiling and cooking down. So we are going to drain this oil and fat out of the sausage and the ham, but we're gonna keep it because that's what we're going to make our roux with. Alright, our sausage is brown good. <clears throat> then we're going to take and uh, we're just going to take it out and put it in the strainer. And uh, let it cool a little bit. Then we're going to put the ham in here and cook it down right in that sausage grease. If you want to die, this ain't a recipe for you. Alright, now we're going to take our ham. We'll add a ham in here. We're going to cook it down. We're going to actually brown 
pan. It adds a total different flavor to your gumbo when you pre-cook your sausage, your ham, your chicken, everything. When you pre-cook it, it's a total, total different taste. It just takes a little bit more effort, a little bit more time, but the weight and the tremendous taste is to die for. Okay, our uh, ham is done, fried up nice and golden brown. We're going to uh, take it out and strain it. Okay, in the meantime, I, uh, I just took our chicken out. Our chicken is uh, been falling apart. The thighs and the uh, chicken breasts and thighs is what that is. And uh, I'm going to set it to the side and I'm going to let it cool. And I'll pull all the skin, the fat, and everything off of it. In the meantime, this is, uh, I'll bring this a little closer to you and show you. This is our uh, chicken stock. That we cooked and uh, see all the vegetables in it. We're just going to leave all of that goodness right there. Right the stock. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit this back on the fire. We're going to take and we're going to add our ham and our sausage back to our chicken stock. And we are going to uh, let that cook for about 15, 20 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to reset the camera up and show you how to make a roux. And the thing to remember is when I make my gumbo, the roux is the very last thing that I put in. The reason that being is you ever eat gumbo and it's got that scorched or burnt flavor to it. That's because the roux was made first, everything was cooked on top of it. Well, your flour... Just like anything, it's going to settle to the bottom of your pot. you got to constantly stir it. If it don't, it's going to stick, it's going to burn. If you add it to the end, all your roux is doing is giving it a little flavor and thickening your gumbo. Now, if you're making uh, like a seafood gumbo, your uh, gravy or roux, you want to call it, is normally thick. Chicken gumbo, you want it to be thin. We're going to cook just enough roux in there to Thicken it just a little bit and just just to give it a little bit of body but not too thick like a brown gravy like you would on a, a seafood gumbo. And uh, let me reposition the camera over the pot and I will show you how to make a roux. Okay, I have decided I'm going to go ahead and make a regular size roux. And uh, so I added a little bit more oil to the skillet. and thing to remember about roux is you got to cook it slow, really slow. I mean, it may take you 20 or 30 minutes, depending on the amount. But you don't want to brown them. You don't want to burn it. And we're going to add just enough flour to uh, get the consistency we want. And this is probably going to be the most lengthiest part of this video because Nobody seems to have more trouble with this than anything. So once you get your oil up, or your grease or fat, whatever you're cooking with, up to temperature, we're going to drop it down on the low. And we're just going to start adding our flour to it. And we're looking for a consistency of, well, you'll just see. Now this is three times the amount of roux I'm going to need for this pot of gumbo here, but I'm just showing you uh, how to make it like a normal roux. And all roux is is brown gravy. You know, that's it. If you uh, wanted to make a brown gravy to uh, put on rice or mashed potatoes or whatever, 
just saute you down some onions <clears throat> beforehand. And cook it down on there. And we're going to turn our fire down really low here. And I need just a little bit more flour. It's almost as the consistency of a thick pancake batter. See how it's starting to lump up right there? That's what you're looking for right here. You just want to add that in there slow, slow, slow. If you put too much, you just have, if it, if it gets too thick, all you got to do is add a little oil back to it. But see that, that consistency? That's what we're looking for right there. At this point, we want to put a little pepper. You don't want a bland roux. There's just nothing worse than a bland roux. A little salt, a little pepper. I'm just going to cook that down. You know, some people cook this in a cast iron skillet, and I do, but right now, this is what I had was my wok that I had fried everything in because it's just so much easier. And my drippings was already in it. So let's just do it in it. And another thing to remember, and a lot of people, a lot of people in South Louisiana and South Mississippi, they don't know what this is, but I don't know about it's a roux spoon. I'll show y'all what a roux spoon is. Roux spoon is a wooden spoon. It's got this curve to it right here. It's got a hole in the center, but it's got this curve. <clears throat> and what that curve is for. Just to get in the curve of your skillet right there. See right there? See how that does that right there? You clean the bottom of your skillet because you have to stir this roux spoon. And it's not like, <clears throat> let's see, not like a, a flat spoon or a rather round spoon that you can't get down in the edge. That curve right there allows you to uh, get it all nice. And you see how it's starting to change colors here, but it's, it's going to take a while. So, and you gotta stir constantly. If you burn it, you you wasted all your 30, 40 minutes or hour of time it took to. And there's that fine line between being burned and done. And I'll show you that fine line to look for. And uh, anyway, I'm gonna cut it away from a little bit, do a little bit more cooking, and I'll bring you back. Okay, we're back, and you can see the bottom when I turn it over. See how it gets that little brownness to it? That's your roux browning right there. You see, see the difference in the color? This has been going for probably about 12 to 13, 15 minutes probably. And we just start to change colors good. So we just, you want to keep it stirred because if you don't, it will, it will scorch on you and it ruins the whole thing. Keep it all off your sides. You want to keep it all the same color. And thing to remember is, the darker your you brown this, the darker your gravy is going to be. But you don't want it dark enough to where it's got that scorched flavor to it. And you can see how it's starting to starting to brown. Okay, I'll bring you back in uh, just a little bit. Okay, we're back. Uh, this is, our roux is getting real close to being done. You see the color consistency of it. And we are been at it for probably 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, on as low as sitting as your stove can go. You see, barely on. And you see how it's kind of like thickening up a little bit, kind of like firming. But the color and your smell is what you gotta go by. And don't be afraid if you do burn it. But I'm going to tell you a trick to taste before, before you add it to your gumbo. Before you add this to your gumbo, and, and the way, I'm gonna do, the way I do mine is I will take this and put it in a, a cup of water and make a really, really thick uh, 
roux gravy, I call it. And then I add it to my gumbo here and I get the cons consistency of the gumbo that I want. And two thirds of this is gonna go in the trash because I just, I made a, a lot to show y'all. This is enough for probably uh, three gallons of gumbo, uh, maybe four gallons. Don't take much. But you can tell if, if you want to take your roux and say you want to, uh, at this point, if you don't know if it's done, just take you a little spoonful like this. A little spoonful, take you a cup of water, stir it up in that cup of water and taste it. If it tastes scorched to you, you don't want to put it in your gumbo. If it tastes burnt, and when I say scorched, I mean burnt. Uh, but we are just about there on a consistency, and you want to go by your smell too. And like I say, if you wanted brown gravy, you could have wilted you down some onions and put it in here and cook down with it. And when you add it to it, basically that's what you got some brown gravy for what a roux is. That spoon is essential though. You really need a roux spoon because it just gets all your stuff off your bottom. I know it may be a little long, but I want to keep you through the entire process to show you the end of this right here. Or if you could smell that, it smells so good. All right, we are there. If you like a darker roux, you can make it a little, little darker. But that is very, you see the consistency in the color. Perfect, perfect consistency, just dripping off in color. All right, so I'm gonna turn my fire from low all the way to off and just let it sit. And it will brown up a little bit more, but it won't scorch from this point on. Matter of fact, I'll tell you what, I'm going to switch sides with this. And bring the gumbo over here. I'll let you take a look in this pot of gumbo. Chicken gumbo. See all the, the sausage, sausage and the ham. See, I like that ham. It's got the brown on it. Boy, you're talking about good. You got your onions, your bell peppers, your garlic. And we're just going to stir that. And keep stirring. And I got my chicken. My chicken's right here in this little pot. And I'm letting it cool. Chicken thighs, chicken breasts, I just cut them up, cut my chicken breasts up in strips, it was a little bit easier to clean. And when it cools, I'll pull it apart and probably pieces about like that, bite sized pieces. And I like to see the fat right here. I'll take all of that fat, all the gristle off from the, uh, the bones out of the chicken thighs. And then I will add my uh, roux back in here will be my next thing that go, goes in. And my chicken, when I pull it apart, will be the very, very, very last thing that I put in here. And the reason is because your chicken is going to cook apart. And as it cooks, you, uh, you just want it nice and done. Alright, we're back and it's time to add the roux. This has been cooking and 
cooked in. Remember I made my roux. Remember I told you we take it out of there and we mix it with water? Because we don't need all that at all. And what are we going to do? We're going to add this to our gumbo until we get the right consistency we want. And it's going to take it a little bit of a cooking to thicken up. But see, you see, I didn't put much because this is chicken and I don't want that much of a thick, thick gravy. Just want to, just a little, just a little bit. And that's going to thicken up a little bit more. Take this ladle where you can see about the color consistency of it, but we just want it a little bit thicker than that. Just a little bit. And I didn't I didn't show you on camera, but as I was cooking this a while ago, I tasted it to make sure all my seasoning was right, just the way I wanted it with my salt, pepper, the garlic, the onion powder. And I put just a hint of Cajun seasoning in it. I don't put filet and all that in my gumbo. Alright, see it's just, just a little bit more. As you can see, it doesn't take much to thicken it up. And at this point, the gumbo has been cooking maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And it, it, it don't take long. You see, it's kind of a, a light gravy. All right. <clears throat> now, a while ago, y'all have seen all my chicken. I went ahead, I pulled it all off the bone. And I made sure there was no fat, no gristle. Everything's off of just pure lean chicken. That's chicken breast and chicken thighs. That's uh, six chicken thighs, and that is four large chicken breasts. And you see how that fill that pot up? What I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit more water to this pot. going to give us <clears throat> roughly about a gallon and three quarters, maybe two gallons of gumbo when it's all said and done. Put just a little bit more roux in here. I'll put this, uh, I'll put the lid back on here and let it come back to a boil and let it boil just a few more minutes and We'll test, test it again to make sure my salt and pepper is right since I added more uh, water to it. And I'll bring you back and show you the end product. Okay, everybody, this here is uh, the end results. Gumbo is done. I've been cooking about an hour and a half. I put my chicken back in. And let me show you. People may not know it, but that is a gumbo ladle. It's made for gumbo. So you got holes in one side, so if you just want meat, you drain your liquid out, and there you got it. Or if you want more gravy, you pour it out that side. Or if you just want regular scoop, just get our scoop. Anyway, it's done. About an hour and a half. Very good. I wish you could smell it. It smells wonderful. Tastes even better. And uh Anyway, friends and family wanted to know how to do it, so that's my video on how I do my chicken gumbo. And uh, please don't be too critical. I'm not no filmmaker. I'm just trying to show some people a little bit of what I know. Uh, just 
hang in there with it. It may take you a time or two, especially on your uh, roof, but you'll get it. Got any questions, just let me know. Give me a call. Thank you.